Good morning, brothers and sisters, and thank you for tuning in to our devotionals this morning. Today, I would like to share out of the book of Joshua from chapter 1, verses 6 and 8. Now, the book of Joshua opens with the address that Moses is dead, and God gives Joshua, who has now succeeded Moses as the new leader of Israel, God gives Joshua instructions to get the people and himself ready to cross the Jordan into the Promised Land. This was not an excitement to accept lightly. Moses' shoes are very large and almost impossible to fill. Joshua had been with the Israelite people throughout their 40 years of, world, of wandering in the wilderness. He knew of all their weaknesses and problems. Also at this time, Joshua was well past middle age, maybe around 70 years old, and he had to be battle ready as they go to possess the land. God gave Joshua assurance that his territory will increase and that no one, no one will be able to stand against him and that God himself would be with him and will never leave him or forsake him. Verse 6 also starts with more instructions to Joshua. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give to them. After hearing these verses, brothers and sisters, we might be led to think that all the coming victory, all the coming successes, and all the territories will just be handed to Joshua on a silver platter. But this is not true. As you have probably experienced in your life, challenges will come like a raging flood. Dangers and perils can suddenly creep in. So, the charge to be strong and courageous alone is not enough. Therefore, we see that God, in verses 7 to 8, revealed to Joshua the utmost importance of obeying and acting on his word. The verses read, verse 7, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it from the, to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Verse 8, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. In essence, God wanted Joshua to rely and trust on the power of his mighty, mighty word. Joshua would meet many trials and other unpleasant events as a leader but he can overcome them by carefully studying the word, carefully reading the word and applying God's word through all these events. The power, knowledge and directions of God's word will equip and empower him to be strong and courageous, leading him to success. What does meditation on the word now, brothers, brothers and sisters? I would like to ask this question. What does meditation on the word translate into? I'm reminded of Psalm chapter 1. Verse 2, where God tells us the blessed person is one whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Let me repeat that. Psalm chapter 1, verse 2, where God tells us the blessed person is one whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Notice here, meditation is not duty but delight. Perhaps, you have experienced delight in receiving a letter or text message and you read it over and over again, studying the words and the meaning behind the message. Likewise, the idea is that the Word of God becomes such a delight to you that there's pleasure when you read it. So, what God charged Joshua was this, meditate on the Word that you receive, Joshua, and that requires more than just reading the Word for it to be effective. Joshua, it should be your life. It should be a guide for your life that will ensure victory. I know that not everyone delights in reading God's Word. I used to be like that. We have no issue with, with just sitting down to listen to a sermon and letting the preacher interpret and explain the passage. But reading the Word, you know, was just a religious duty. Something, you know, we put on a checklist. But there was no delight in doing it. Now, how can we have the dedication and commitment to read and study God's Word so that we will not lose out on the power therein? Let's start with the mind. 
If Joshua just read the word, using his eyes to scan across the sea of words, not, not using his mind to read and concentrate, not pausing to ponder, absorbing the word, then it can be a rather fruitless exercise. This can happen when our eyes just roll over the words and with the slightest distraction, it will stop us from continuing our reading. We cannot just be hoping to accomplish finish, you know, finishing reading the whole Bible by a set time, but we need to read the word with careful consideration. Brothers and sisters, don't rush through the Bible, but fully grasp with our mind what the word is telling us and using our minds to discern every situation we encounter with God's Word as our guide. This kind of reading requires more patience, more attention and thinking than many of us are used to giving the Bible. Now, let's focus on the heart. If we read with mind and without heart, it just be gaining hate knowledge and that only puffs us up. We can run the risk of being self-righteous or legalistic like the Pharisees, where the knowledge of God's Word is separated from our hearts, separated from the life we are living, separated from our reality of sin, fears and needs. Then again, another fruitless exercise. But verse 8 says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. We need to allow the word to penetrate our hearts, deep in our hearts, such that it's a permanent picture here, where the truth of the word is firmly planted and experienced throughout our days, helping us, equipping us to be strong and courageous. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-aged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of hearts. Now, brothers and sisters, thinking without meditating will undermine our Bible reading. So will thinking and feeling without obedience. God told Joshua here, Obey all the law. Obey all the law. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, but be careful to do everything written in it. Obedience to do everything written in God's Word is not easy. We, you know, we prefer to obey some and to ignore the others. But it's a charge that we have to follow. His Word and directives given to us through His Word has to be followed even, even though it's very unpopular. In the book of James chapter 2, verse 17, it says, Faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action or works, is dead. And verse 26 continues to say, As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Obedience by obeying, obeying and doing God's word is critical to courage. The last point I would like to make is taken from verse 8. The Lord commanded Joshua, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Yes, it's so beneficial and comforting when God's words are so embedded in us that His words are on our very lips. Now, this is not about just quoting Bible verses, but rather, His Word has become, His Word has come into our daily conversations, into our daily lives. You know, remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15, the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart. Jesus rebuked the teachers of the law saying, These people honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. However, if the Word of God becomes part of who we are, it is firmly planted in our hearts, then we can find fresh courage and persevere in courage. And we can even be of help and encouragement to others. We use the words of God that have helped us to encourage others in their times of need. In return, our faith will be strengthened, will be reinforced when we recall how during our own tough times, God's Word was our hope and strength. Brothers and sisters, as I end, just as God assured Joshua that he was with him, rest assured that he will also be with us, never leaving us and never forsaking us. We can rest and know that God is always right beside us. 
I strongly encourage us to dig deep into His Word and ask the Holy Spirit, who is the author, to be by our side, to teach us. And then we will be fed. We will grow stronger and more courageous to face whatever life brings to us. Thank you. Now let's turn to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your mighty word. We thank you that we can have this luxury, this privilege of, of knowing truths from you, guiding our lives. But Father, you know sometimes it's so difficult to obey your words. But Holy Spirit, I pray, give us strength. Give us the desire to want to follow and to obey all the words of God. Help us. Forgive us when we fail sometimes. Forgive us when we, we fall down. But please, Holy Spirit, lift us up. I come before you, I come before you to, today, Father in heaven, to just ask that you empower us, strengthen us, that your words will be on our very lips, that your words will be a lamp unto our feet. Oh, Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you. Once again, Father in heaven, we pray that you guide us. You stir our hearts, stir our hearts, Father in heaven, to read your word daily. Hallelujah. And let us not keep our words, you know, within ourselves, but let us to go out, to go out and spread your mighty word. Praise you, Father in heaven. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.